talked about the differences between competencies, learning objectives, and learning outcomes. Now let's look at how to apply them. The next step is to make sure your course is aligned with your competencies and outcomes. Courses that align competencies and learning outcomes have a higher student success rate and are an important component of an online course. When writing a learning outcome, begin with your end goals. What is the competency the student must gain and how is the assignment aligned to the competencies and learning outcomes? It is easy to add materials to a course, but you must always ask yourself, does the assignment support the desired skills and knowledge a student must obtain? The structure of your course matters. Remember KSA, knowledge, skills, and attitude? Keep in mind what the student must learn from your course. What are the specific skills and knowledge they must know to be successful? This structure guides your choice of instructional materials and assessments. We've all been in classes where questions covered on the exam aren't necessarily the materials covered in class, or we haven't mastered the materials given in the course. Sometimes classes feel like a waste of time and money. These courses typically are not aligned. By paying attention to the processes of alignment, a course can go from below average to dynamic, resulting in excellent scores on instructor evaluations and higher retention rates of students. Misaligned courses are fragmented and ineffective, causing a student to receive mixed messages. Students who spend time on meaningless activities often do not see why they are in your program and dropout rates climb. By aligning your instruction, students stay on track, and the course can be measured in effectiveness through proper assessments, another key component of alignment. Assessments measure how well students master learning outcomes. Make sure students have the opportunity to practice skills and knowledge so they can make the connections between doing and knowing the materials. Quality Matters defines alignment as having the following critical course components. One, would be learning objectives or learning outcomes. Two, what is the assessment and the measurement of the course? Three, the resources and materials used in the course. Four, how to engage the learner. And five, the course technology and how this is implemented in the class. These all work together to ensure that students achieve the desired learning outcomes. When aligned, each of these critical course components is directly tied to and supports the learning objectives and competencies. The beauty of having your course aligned is that students have a roadmap and direct their learning efforts appropriately, and they can monitor their progress, which frees up instructor time for input and feedback. Critical course components begin with the broad learning objectives. Instructional activities should directly reflect the action desired in the learning outcomes. Course outcomes guide the selection of resources and materials, technology, and the assessments. Assessments are assignments, quizzes, exams, group projects, essays, multimedia presentations, and so on. Let's talk about KSA a little more, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Benjamin Bloom of Bloom's Taxonomy, along with a team of colleagues, described three activities of learning. They are, one, a student's mental skill or cognitive ability, also known as knowledge. Two, ability to use manual dexterity or physical attributes, also known as skills. And three, the integration of feelings or emotion, also known as attitude. So, if a course is aligned and the competencies and outcomes are met, and a student is thinking, feeling, and doing while learning, then students should have acquired new knowledge, attitudes, and skills. Also keep in mind when applying Bloom's taxonomy to pay attention to the hierarchy of knowledge and skills within the Bloom's pyramid. Within categories of blooms, which are remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating, assign verbs that support your learning outcomes. To help 
in understanding Bloom's Pyramid, let's apply the story of Goldilocks and the three bears using this taxonomy. If you ask students to apply remembering to the Goldilocks story, you could ask questions such as, who was the biggest bear? What food was too hot? For understanding, you would ask, why didn't the bears eat the porridge? Why did the bears leave the house? If you want students to apply their knowledge, have them list the sequence of events in the story, or draw three pictures showing the beginning, middle, and ending of the story. Analyzing the story would be, why do you think Goldilocks went for a sleep? How would you feel if you were Baby Bear? What kind of person do you think Goldilocks is and why? Evaluating reads like this. How could you rewrite this story with a city setting? Write a set of rules to prevent what happened in the story. If students were to apply Create, they would write a review for a story and specify the type of audience that would enjoy this book. Act out a mock court case as though the bears were taking Goldilocks to court. Bloom's taxonomy is used to help the learner think as well as help instructors evaluate their learning outcomes. Keep in mind the level of learning you are asking of the learner. It's not always a good idea to overwhelm them with too much information. Think of Bloom's taxonomy as a condiment. The correct amount is always best. If you overdo it or underdo it, it sometimes is just not right. If we apply these principles to HIT learning outcomes, it might look something like this. Analyze the documentation in the health record to ensure it supports the diagnosis and reflects the patient's progress, clinical findings, and discharge status. Another specific learning outcome for coding would read like this. Evaluate medical documentation and apply key principles and sequencing instructions in accordance with the ICD-10-CM official coding guidelines for chapters 1 and 2 in the codebook. We wouldn't ask the student to understand in these examples. There is not a good way to evaluate understanding. But if we apply verbs from the category understand from the Bloom's Pyramid, we would know if the student had an understanding if we use one of these verbs. If we ask them to classify, describe, identify, translate, or paraphrase, Another example drawn from Quality Matters is if a student were enrolled in a speech class, you wouldn't assign an essay to evaluate the student's speaking ability. When evaluating your learning competencies, learning objectives, and learning outcomes, it might be best to create a table or organizational chart to readily see how these align with assignments and course materials. Alignment is the key component of student and instructor success.